Well, I've always painted because I used to teach in secondary schools. I've always studied at university and, and um, it's a nice relaxing subject if you're painting. Um, but three years ago, um, I wasn't very well and I went to the doctors and they were treating me for colitis and then all of a sudden I got this bad stomach and I couldn't go to the bathroom etc so they rushed me into hospital and found that I had colon cancer and when they gave me a CAT scan they found that my liver was completely covered with cancer too. So they gave me three months to live. After having what I had to have was a colostomy so that they could and then put onto chemo. So I've been having chemo now for every two weeks. At first the chemo made me, I don't think I was ever really ill, but the chemo made me very tired. And the effects of the chemo was worse than the, excuse me, because the chemo makes my nose drip. Um, the, the effects of the chemo was worse than the cancer itself because the cancer didn't at that point really hurt. So I kept having the chemo and, and they discovered that the cancer was shrinking as in the corner. It shrunk quite a bit to, to a node. It was completely blocked, but it shrunk to a node, which is like a little lump which is good. And then they discovered that they keep having the chemo, that the um, cancer was shrinking on the liver. That was really good because it's evidently hard to get to the, chemo, the cancer on the liver. Then all of a sudden my body started rejecting uh, the chemo and it was eating all my white blood cells. So each week I would go for blood tests and they'd say no, you it's still eating your white blood cells. We can't give you the chemo. What my nurse said to me, why aren't they giving you Nuprigen, which is a drug that they inject into you, which makes your body think that you're sick. And when your body's sick, it produces all these white uh, blood cells. Um, so the Nuprigen shots started to work. I, I was able to get chemo again, but by the time four weeks had passed, the cancer had spread. It would spread into my lungs and more on the liver. Uh, the liver, the only way the liver affects me is if I've been in a large class teaching in, in conventions, because I still, still pain. Um, every morning I get up and get dressed and put my jewelry on and my makeup on and I pretend that nothing's wrong and I come down and I usually do some paintings for publishing uh, or I'll come and work on a, on a project. I teach classes in the classroom Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday so there's always things to be painting for them to copy. Anyway, I'm still having chemo as long as everything's okay and the white blood cells are being taken care of with the new project. So this will just continue. I think that, to be honest, that all everybody who prays for me, I have a lot of people praying for me, and my faith in God, I think, uh, I think that's been a factor because I have faith that he'll carry me through as long as he wants me to. Uh, I'm not ready to go yet because I have lots of grandchildren I want to see growing up. <laughs> so the painting, I can sit and really relax and it takes all your thoughts out of you. You float away, you're, you're in there. I, when I'm painting this, I'm in this scene. This is a scene of England. So that's kind of, my four day was the buildings, rows of buildings in towns and uh, cottages and children playing in the country. Um, so I'm into that, into the scenery. 
and it takes my mind off anything, everything else. Sometimes it takes my mind off supper, but that's fine. <laughs> I think the main thing is you've got to, uh, like I say, get up every day and live. You've got to live. God gave you this life. You have to live. You can't succumb to your illness. <laughs>